Pascal, the first La Liga weekend. Uh, frustrating if you're a Barcelona fan, but overall, it was a nice welcome back to the league. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I feel like right from the first game, Osuna versus Sevilla, like those real tempo teams knew what we were going to do. So that was kind of fun for me. Yeah, I agree with you there. Um, it was right from the first game, Osasuna really took it to Sevilla. Like they saw Sevilla's lineup and said, you know what, we smell blood, let's go for it. And then nice tempo trans went on into other games. Even the nil nils were really like good. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's start away from La Liga for a bit. Let's start with Real Madrid. They were the Super Cup champions. Um, very impressive. Like this Real Madrid team, they just keep on winning. Yeah, against Frankfurt, it was a pretty comprehensive win. Frankfurt gave them a couple of scary moments, but overall, Real Madrid are very, very good. I saw that there's a lot of praise that has to go to Casemiro, to Benzema, to Alaba. But the one person I feel deserves praise for that game was Tony Cruz. He was, he was amazing. Do you think the German can recover his best form this season? Because last season, we weren't his biggest fans, were we? Yeah, I, I think I, I, we, we, I can't, we were harsh on him because his performances dipped in 2020, you know, coming off that injury that kept him off for a couple of weeks against PSG was really slow. And in the knockout games, you could see that when Kamavinga came on for him, Real Madrid were given a new lease of life. But I do think he can recover back to his best level because even at the weekend, I thought he was one of their better players against Almeria. Yeah, and speaking on that game, Rudiger, natural boy, they had, they had a nightmare in the first couple of minutes, didn't they? Uh, Rudiger was shook. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like the, with the way the game panned out, it's like Almeria, they started really well. They defended they, defensively, Almeria, they were so solid. Like the back three, Kalki, Eli, Babic, they almost shut up every attack from your dad. Yeah. And even for the most part, the shots that Real Madrid had, especially in the first half, were simple for you know, Fernando and Go. So the back three really did their job. It's just that it's Real Madrid. Yeah. You know what I'm going to say? Let's not harp too much on it. Yeah, yeah. Like we've seen the script over and over, over again and over, in La Liga over and games. Champions League and Copa del Rey. Like you just knew. Like I, I remember it when it was happening. Yeah, it was halftime and it was one zero, and I got some messages. I was like, oh, maybe Almeria can do it. I'm like, dude, next 45 minutes, I'm surprised if I'm going to score two goals. And that's what yeah. he did. The first one was a bit scrappy, but the second one, the Alaba free kick from his first touch of the game, that was pure genius. Yeah, within 21 seconds of coming on. And yeah, the first goal was scrappy, but you, you have to be scrappy sometimes to win, win get points and games in this league. So yeah. that's typical Real Madrid. They weren't exactly, they didn't overwhelm Almeria by any sense, but they dug in and got the win in the end. Like they always. Yeah. And that's the difference. I think that's what sets them apart in this league is that while mm -hmm. other teams do have the quality players, but they just have that winning DNA. They just, just feel they're going to win. I know it feels like a cliche, but there's one of those teams that they're never beaten and it's, one of those things that's hard to quantify in terms of tactical terms or football terms, but mm -hmm. they find a way to win regardless. Yeah, um, just a moment, to, I'm going to touch on Al Maria because Sadiq, he might be off to the Arial. From what we saw in this game, he didn't look like a 30 million player, did he? Yeah, he was, he was, good, in, he was good in some moments, but largely he was kind of disappointing. He didn't make Rudiger affair as much as he could have. Yeah, because it felt of, like a, um, yeah. Yeah, in terms of replacements, Almeria bought Leo Baptista. He used to play for Malaga among many other clubs and he's back. So we'll see how that works as Sadiq goes. Yeah, and with this team, with how they performed, given the fact that the squad isn't ready yet, given like I, I think Kalki, the defender, is gonna be amazing. He's gonna have an amazing future given how he played. 
do we see something here that they can build on that we feel comfortable that they're not they're not foregone conclusions to get relegated to even if that they leave? Yeah. Now I don't think I don't believe anyone is a foregone conclusion at this point. So they do have a chance. Like you said, Kaiki looks that's really fine. And whether Almeria stay up or not, he might be moving on to bigger things if he continues. And yeah, Ruby can have no complaints about his boys. They were they gave everything they got. It's just that they were facing Real Madrid. Yeah. Well, no goals for Benzema in this one, but no goals for Lewandowski in the Barca game either. And uh, yeah. <laughs> how, no, how do you really to save you? He made the right kind of runs and was making the right kind of movements. It's just that the balls to him were either non-existent or just disastrously poor in terms of end products. Like, hey, yeah. where do we start with this game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I saw Barca like coming into this game. There was a lot of excitement from the preseason. We saw what they did right. against Pumas. We saw what they did against um, Madrid and Juventus. And you're like, oh, it's Rio. It should be. I, I thought it was going to be at least four goals from Barcelona, but it well, felt I, like old Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, it was like, okay, let me go on a little rant here, if you don't mind. Do you mind? Yeah, go. Go. Okay, so our home form, especially against teams from the bottom half, is quite underwhelming when you really look at it because you just like against Rayo, yes, we created chances in the end and could have won, but we didn't that well. Like we were too slow in moving the ball. There was no tempo at all. The I saw a start that Pedro and Gavi only passed the ball between themselves three times. I'm like, what? Wow. Yeah. I'm like, we were too, and this is a problem I have with Javi's play against teams like this we're too rigid in our positions like everyone is only everyone is always in their position no one ever like try to be fluid because being fluid in your position will pull apart players real madrid do this a lot other teams do this a lot we need to work on that and then that's all well and good you can say okay maybe with a bit of training and everything everyone will gel together but then the final balls that rafinha and dembele were given I just, I, have, I was so angry at some of the things they, they did. Yeah, but, I'll, say, I'll say those poor quality, not only in the final ball, but also in the finishing, because Barca had 20 shots in this game. And with 20 shots, you would expect at least one, one would go into the net. And there were shots that at times that were taken from Dembele where it goes straight at the goalkeeper. Yeah, the goalkeeper Dimitrescu- doesn't have to make a save. <laughs> yeah, Dimitrescu had a lot of saves that were just straight at him. The only team that really beat him was Aubameyang's go- shot and Katena was on the line to clear it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but fair play to Ryu. They were excellent. Cis was amazing in midfield. I'm sure he's yeah. a big part of the reason why Pedro have a <laughs> connect. Another yeah, he... uh, yeah, go on. Yeah, assist to uh, Pedri, Gabi, and Lewandowski out of this pocket when he went home. Yeah, um, Lewandowski was also in Lejeune and Katerina's pocket. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it was an amazing performance from Rayo. They had a couple of chances on the counter too. They didn't take them, but, you know, their record against Barcelona is honestly impressive and also very annoying, depending on which <laughs> side you are on. <laughs> yeah, like three unbeaten games against Barcelona, two which included two wins and three clean sheets. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, it means, well, yeah, to and be it, honest, I'm, I'm kind of glad this kind of result has happened so we know we have to put our heads down and work hard on the training ground. Yeah. On, on Barca for a moment, do you think, and especially Lewandowski, do you think this is like what people would call Bundesliga attack? So do you think this is a guy who just had his first his debut for Barcelona in a competitive match, and he's going to get it. Yeah. But Bundesliga tax is just people sp- overspending on players they haven't watched. That's, 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 let's leave that for the Prem boys. But it, I feel like, obviously, it's going to take time to ad- for Lewandowski to adjust. He can score goals as fully adjusted, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, yeah it's going to take 
time for him, Rafinha, everyone to gel together. And yeah. I also, I heard this point that maybe we can cut them some slack because we didn't even know if he was going to play on to Friday. So. Oh, that, that is true. That's right. That's, and that, that's, a, that's a big problem because Jules Kunde is yet to be registered as well. Do you think he's going to be ready to go for the game against Rostov event? Yeah, it depends on how fast the Barcelona move players up because at least now we can, well, they want one ratio now in terms of the wage cap, which is good. As against the one to four ratio we were on, where we could only use 20, 70, 25% of any money we get got. So hopefully he'll be ready for match day two. And, you know, Javi doesn't start a center back at right back again. Yeah, yeah, but that's a big issue. Like, Barca need to recruit in that area because I feel that's, that's going to be a weakness going forward. Yeah, because the um, at least in big games, Aravo or Kunde, they will be reliable. But against teams that will, you need delicate build up, Dest and Roberto, they have their days and then, but those days are more, I feel, and far in between, more often than not. So we need. Yeah. I guess I uh, I understand why we were desperately chasing us for the all summer. I didn't get it until this game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I'm we're we're linked with fights, but I don't know if that's going to happen. But we'll no. see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, moving on from Bars, let's go to Atleti. They were in action today and boy, like no Benzema, no Swat, no Benzema, no Lewandowski, but our boy Alvaro Morata really stepped up today. With two goals yeah. and saw Felix three assists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alvaro Morata. And the happiest person on earth right now is not Alvaro Morata, it's Luis Enrique. He's like, that's my striker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the one thing I liked about his goals was the second goal, where he did things that Morata doesn't normally do, where he had that patience and calmness of mind to stay yeah. outside. Because when he scored the second goal, I was like, this is a great goal, but I, I thought it was quite like. Offside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he like he's been doing well not only in this game. He had a great preseason where he's got a hat trick against Juventus. I'd like it would be dumb to let him go now one day. Yeah, they'll be doubting whether they should let him go at this point. Also, you also have the point that teams that want team might say, Oh, this guy's the real deal. Let's make an offer they can't refuse. But in all honesty, I think Atleti should only sell him if they are desperate for funds or something, which I don't think they are. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like Morata, while he may not score as many as a Benzema or a Lewandowski would, like he offers teams that Suarez offered plus the extra mobility. And he can yeah. also be that target man that Felix, Griezmann, and everyone can, you know, play off of and shine around. Yeah, yeah, I feel that too. And he's he, he offers one thing that he does is he, he's spacey, he's skillful. And yeah, with far as you have the skill, but you didn't have the pace. And maybe what Morata lacks is he doesn't have that finishing IQ like like a Suarez, like a Benzema, like mm-hmm. a Lewandowski. Mm-hmm. But I feel if you're a striker, like and you're playing Fast Like Madrid and you can get 17 or 18 goals, that might be mm-hmm. good enough for them to put in a very good challenge to to go for the league. And I see Morata getting around that level. Yeah. And you also have to put into the fact that if Felix, who had a great game, the weight of his passes was very good. Griezmann, who scored for the first time since January. You have Correa, you have Carrasco, you have Cunha, you have Lamar. Like, if you look at it on paper, like last season, Atleti are loaded. Yeah. Yeah, there's a reason why everyone had them as favorites last season before yeah. they went and lost themselves. So if everyone placed their potential, I believe they have enough strength up front to make up for any weaknesses at the back end. They can make this league really, really spicy, in my opinion. Yeah, that, that, that's something that I've seen, like, and especially even on our own podcast or just podcast around, like, Atleti have been really underestimated. And you look at the team that they have, when they're on it, they look unbeatable. Like, when there would be an attack to choose your and, and Griezmann comes in and scores. And you look on the bench and you see Korea there, you see Cunha there. And it's like, you're like, wow, the attacking options are so great for this team. Yeah, there's that. It's just, yeah. They have to perform. 
Yeah, and it seems like they have that defensive solidity about them recently, like into or especially in the midfield, they recover balls much better than they did. Like in this game, I'm not sure whether it was Hitafe's poor attacking play, but you never got the sense that Hitafe were really going to create the clear chances. I know Bor and Mayoral had two good chances, but you never really got that sense of danger from Hitafe. Yeah. The 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 only the, the funny thing is that the times where Hetafe created the chances, as soon as they missed them, they were punished because they made sloppy mistakes at the back. So yeah, that's something that will make Kike Sanchez Flores really mad. Yeah, especially when you spend big on Boa Mahiral and let be your flagship player and he misses those two chances. That that's not gonna make him happy as well. <laughs> At least he's but, getting the chances, so on another day, maybe he returns his senses. Yeah. What do you think of now Molina on his debut in comparison to Trippier? Uh, he, was, he's not, he wasn't as technical as Trippier was, but he was... Is the, I can't just judge him on one game, but on the one game, though, he was quite good. And yeah, yeah he, he like made some good and deliveries into the box. Not all of them were successful, but the idea in and of itself was very good from him. Yeah, and, and it's a place that I think you really need a strength in. So I think in that case, they've, they've bought the right player. And that's, that's what you need in the transfer window. Um, another player who had a brilliant game, but for the losing team was Juan Iglesias. Like I feel he really did a good job on that right flank for Atafe, but especially given the quality of position in the game. So, yeah. more power to yeah. yeah, so soon. Iglesias was quite good. It's just that his strike has rubbed him of a couple of assists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on to Sevilla, because it doesn't look like they will be breaking into the top three anytime soon. They played off soon, as we alluded to at the beginning. And in the first half, I felt they did okay. But mm-hmm. after that second goal, they just collapsed. Yeah. And speaking of the second goal, by the way, that that's not we both agree that's not the penalty, right? No, no, no. I, I'm I'm quite pissed off with that because the head of the referees of the Spanish league said that this year there are no penalty kills, which means there are no little penalties, and you give the penalty kills or penalty kills on the first day of the league. Yeah, that's exactly. blood boiling. Yeah, but, but that's typical RFEF and that you just believe. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? Like so, uh, something good came out of it because Ayma Oro scored his first goal in yeah. prof- in his professional debut or professional yeah. debut as starter, and that's that's nice. Yeah, that was lovely to see a young homegrown player giving the fit by the manager and his teammates. That was really good, and for that alone, that was that was worth watching the first game of this season. But yeah, back to Sevilla. After that second goal, you're right. They just didn't react. And to be honest, even the first half, for large periods of it, they were on the ropes. Yeah, like, yeah. Because like Moyes, Moyes had that chance. Yeah. Um, um, and Torre. Torre had... Torre was just taking pop shots at Bono for fun. <laughs> yeah, Bono was just like, guys, help me out. Yeah. This game showed two things for me. That Sevilla need at least two more defense, at, at least one very good defender, or at least two, or yeah. two just normal defenders. And I think they need to be more aggressive. They need to could... change things up without their approach games now. Yeah. And, and also, felt this game showed the need for Esco because they lacked, when they were chasing the game, they lacked that creativity. They lacked that someone who can open doors, give that defense that didn't pass. Mm-hmm. And the crosses, they were doing, they were, the crosses they were doing were sort of repetitive. And we know Sevilla from last season, whenever they get in trouble, the ball goes to the Navas, so it goes to Acuna, and they attempt to cross, then no one gets, so it goes to the other player, they do the same thing. Yeah. And they sort of needed something different. So with the center back here, and right, I'll be more efficient with Lef, um, not Lewandowski, Lopetegui, because <laughs> Marcao, Marcao was out. And yeah. he's going to come back. And it does feel like they're going after Nelson. And maybe he comes in before the next yeah. game against Bayer lead. But, yeah. I also it's... heard that they were linked with Nacho from Real Madrid. And that could be nice. 
Yeah, that that'll be a good signing, actually. That'll be a good signing. Not based off his first game, but overall. No, no, yeah. <laughs> but maybe <laughs> maybe it's one of those things where because he's playing for Real Madrid, he's not as exposed. But when he comes when he plays for Sevilla, then he gets exposed and we're like, Wow, that's a poor signing. But yeah. <laughs> but I'll be patient with Lopetegui because Yeah, same. It, he does have a sports club. It's unfair to blame him for this. Pamplona is a tough place to go to. We saw the reaction of the crowd after the win, and mm-hmm. yeah, it was it was a tough, it was one of the tough assignments that he got. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Pamplona and Osasuna, where do we think they can aim for this season if they keep making results like this? Yeah, I, I'm honestly, I I feel they should just aim for. The first place of the bottom ten teams. <laughs> that should be the aim. I don't think they'll be able to get Europe. Okay, that's fair. That's fair enough. I agree too. I think they'll finish lower than they usually do this year, but they'll still be where you said, like eleventh at least. Yeah. Yeah. Should we move on to the Real? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Th- this one was interesting because. They came up with the youth, like the youth system of Villarreal was what won them the game. And that's something like Jackson getting his first goal, Baena yeah, with lovely. a the really Bruce. lovely goal. Then the Galasso scored. I was like off my chair when I was looking at that. Yeah, I was, I was off my chair too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, but it was beautiful to see um, Villarreal's Canteras winning them the game. Yeah, even Pino was also heavily involved in Jackson's goal. Yeah, on Pino, right? Let's talk about the transfer of him because, like, there are rumors circulating around that he might go to Arsenal, mm-hmm. and that might be what funds the Umasa big deal. If that happens, I feel Vieira are making a tactical blunder, strategic yeah, blunder. Even I think they should do everything in their power to keep him. Like, I'd rather they sell Danjuma than sell Pino, if you ask yeah. me. Danjuma yeah. was very good for him last season, but. Pino is just Pino. Pino has that different factor to me, and you can tell they're winning games largely without Danchuma. and mm-hmm. I can see Jackson growing as the season go, goes on. And if yeah. they need a striker just to fill in the gap for Jackson to improve, when I go for Edson Cavani because he's the guy who can come in there. He can do a job after mm-hmm. a year. He retires or he goes to South America. I yeah. think that's better than. Best in your farm on Sadiq, who we've already spoken about. Like he hasn't really done it at a top league yet. So yeah. Yeah. another thing is that um with um someone like Kavan, I feel like Jackson is going to learn a lot from him. And at the end of the day, like you said, when Cavani does go, Jackson will be a better player, even if he doesn't play as much. Like he'll get that experience from a very good striker. Yeah, yeah, and and I guess this is this. Results sort of bodes well for both our predictions that the area will be in the top four next season. Your prediction is that they'll finish third, and uh, I, I, changed my, I, I, I changed my mind. mind. Oh no, I, I like, I like I, on Twitter, I put my new predictions in the Sadrilla Real Foot. I came to my senses, I'm like, wait, I looked at the players at Leti and I'm like, if these guys actually get Griezmann at least on song, they'll be deadly, they're deadly. So so next, but next week though, it's like the area of the FFC, which will be interesting to see. <laughs> yeah, top of the yeah. table clash already. Will Emery yeah. finally slay his long bloody dragon in Diego Simeone? Yeah, based on the FFC, I doubt it. I doubt, but I, I yeah. don't believe really will mess him up because really was very good in this game. Because yeah. River the lead. The 3 0 scoreline is kind of harsh on them because they did oh, create, it is. but really was very good among the many good goalkeepers we had this weekend. Really was up there. Yeah. yeah, he was tough. And I feel maybe if Weissman had played, if he had started, maybe Vidal would have, like, maybe the results would be as bulky or they would have gotten something out of it. Like, but you're right. The 3 0. They could have gotten a goal at least out of it, but Villarreal were deserved winners. Yeah, they were. And in that competition for to get over Sevilla, there's also Real Betis. And in this game, the game that we just saw, like the red card really helped them today. Because <laughs> after yeah, the, the red, red card, card was... it's all over. <laughs> after I read that, I'm like, 
Let's pack it up, bro. Let's move that trip back. <laughs> the chances of winning just died. Yeah. But he only played two games last season, and I feel like maybe he might just he might be lucky to get another one. Another one. <laughs> if, if France, Francisco is really really angry. But yeah, yeah. Um, we saw Borja, Fekir, and Wanmi, the king, picking up yeah, from where they left off last season. Yeah, Wami well, might not be a one season wonder as I thought. Exactly. <laughs> as that because everyone on fantasy on the fantasy league is like, should we pick Wami? Maybe this is a purple patch, but no, this guy is serious. <laughs> yeah, it is serious. But what's also serious is Betis's re- registration issues because yeah. they have about five or six players they haven't registered. That's insane. Yeah, that's and it, this has gone under the radar of everyone talking about whether or not Barcelona or this and that. But yeah, Betis have also had to sell Mark Bartra to aid this. And even that might not be enough to register everybody. Yeah. Because the thing is, they, they might activate a lever of their own in like selling that. tickets in right to, mm-hmm. to the, the tickets in revenue to an investment fund. But it's not as long as Barcelona's. It's about five years compared to Barcelona, which is 25 years. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's bad if they're able to get the players registered, but I'm I'm really worried about that just because if they can't get this done, that might it might wreck the entire season. But if they do get it, you could see a team that could challenge for the top four, given that Sevilla will be at the level that Definitely. they've been over the past four years. Yeah, because what we did also over Sevilla, it's open season for fourth place now, so. Villarreal looked really strong. They started well. Real Betis started well. And yeah, another team who is in this discussion started well too. Yeah, Real Sociedad like, against Cadiz. And they, they were fun, right? They, like when Kubo, and, like the way they played with Kubo, Bryce, yeah. Silva, like it, it was very interesting to see what Real Sociedad would do. Yeah, it's, I was like, I was really interested to see how the lineup would work because you, I always envision Kubo and Bryce being right-sided players, but it works well. There's a lot of freedom given to them. Kubo's goal, as much as I yeah. hate to say, it was nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is the right club for him in that mm. he's playing... Yeah, this is the right manager for him. Yeah, yeah, because with, with Villarreal, he was playing for a manager who would demand more mm-hmm. physical work from him, which he didn't like. In Mallorca, he was playing for a team that he didn't have much of the ball and a team that's not dominating games. But like we also said, he has a team that plays the type of football he likes. He wouldn't have to work as hard defensively. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is a place where he shines and he gets a lot of goals and assists. And yeah. you really see him propelling Real Sociedad in that top four race. Yeah, he's be really important, especially as our Faba won't be back for quite a bit. And yeah, yeah it's it's a good place for Kubo to shine. I would absolutely hate it though if he shined in their next game. <laughs> yeah, which is against Barcelona. <laughs> yeah. My family would never be able to live down my shin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But, but Real Sociedad, they still had the problem of only scoring one goal, but that was one down minute. to Ledesma being a demon again in front of in goal. Mm. Yeah, Cho should have scored a couple, right? And Cho is yeah. an interesting player because people would call him the next Mbappe. Yeah. Just hope he's next Mbappe, just in um, play alone. We'll get to yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, not, 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 not Mbappe that's on the seven-year loan from Real Madrid, eh? The PSG. <laughs> seven-year loan. <laughs> yeah, but, but Cho was really bright when he came on. He had a couple of chances. Um, Ledesma beat him. But I believe that Cho can be a good player and will also, uh, Kubo, he's also going to benefit from the kind of football that Lariel plays. Yeah. yeah it is. What do we think of Athletic and that race to top four? Do you think they can get it as well? Or is that too much for them? I think top four is too much, but Europa League is definitely a possibility given the coach they have and the fact that some of their players had their better seasons for Athletic under him. And to be fair, today against Mallorca, I really liked their approach. It was 
a very attacking lineup with Sunset and Munain as interiors. I never thought I'd see the day, but <laughs> it's really good. It's just, you know, they need to work on their finishing. Yeah, they, they have an actually shaped hole in, in this team because ever since he left, the finishing has been, has been yeah. awful. Yeah, honestly, it, I thought Sunset would be the one to fill this hole, but apparently Valverde sees him as a central midfielder. So yeah. Know. Yeah, but, but like but like you said, it, they were very enjoyable to watch. Like I feel this is one of those games that if Martin was still the manager, they would have had like four shots the entire game. But in this game, they had 17 shots to Mario Kart. They, they hit the post twice, right? Post twice, Rashkovic yeah. was a demon in goal. And this honestly, that's the upgrade Mario Kart have been crying yeah. for two years because Mano <laughs> Mano Mano. and, and um, what's his name? So we're not it at all. Yeah, yeah. Like, like when when I saw the set play, I'm like, yeah. Like when I saw him play, I'm like, yeah, Mallorca. Like, at least they won't blame their goalkeeper for most of their losses this season. Yeah. Also, they are really good defensively, and they've been good defensively throughout their preseason. They only considered one goal from the penalty spot, and. You know, Javi, great teams are usually very tough to break down. So I feel like their defense is going to be their saving grace this season because they don't, they didn't really threaten Athletic besides that one header from Kangin. Yeah, and um, a brilliant save from Unai Simon, that one. Yeah, that was a brilliant save. Yeah, and moving on from Athletic, Valencia, I was pleasantly surprised by Gatuso's Valencia. And again, it's like different. Style of, it's similar to Athletic in that you go from a manager that's very pragmatic, very defensive, mm-hmm. to a manager who's like more free flowing, and that's what yeah, we saw with Valencia. Yeah, more enterprise than I'm not sure how far Valencia can go in terms of challenging for Europe. But I remember last week I made a prediction that they might be in the in a relegation battle this season. But yeah. with this performance, I think, I think yeah. I'm starting to change my mind because they were they were brilliant against Girona. Yeah. And Drenna themselves weren't bad too in the first half. They it was a it was quite a good game, but you know, the end product wasn't really there all the time besides the penalty. But yeah, I agree with you. Valencia, I already said Valencia will be safe, but I think if teams go well for them, it could be a season to remember. And I also want to let people know that Gatuso is quite a good cup manager. So yeah. Yeah, and Valencia is a good cup team, so it, it should be fun. And they have, there's lots of like young players I really enjoyed. Lino, I think Duro would have a good season. Yeah. If Valencia can get another center forward, I think that would be great as well. And maybe just another center back because Shomet, <laughs> he's, he's from the old system and like he committed like a hard tackle. <laughs> Yeah. And he deserves the red. He deserves the red yeah. for sure. Yeah. If Gabriel isn't there, there's problems. And the Akabi, the Akabi has grown over the past 12 months. I'll, let's give him that. It's just that his partner yeah. isn't grown at all. Yeah. So they need an answer to back. Sure. back. Jamal can play as a center back, but I feel I like him better in midfield. Yeah, and it was also good to see Musa as a center midfield as well. Yeah. And then. I also feel this young player that plays center back last season. What's his name again? Yeah, yeah, it skips it skips my mind at the moment. But yeah, like I, I know who you're talking about. He's he's also going to be very good as well because like he was decent after after the red card he came on. He showed a brave face, mm-hmm. and and uh, yeah, like. There were lots of things to really enjoy about that Valencia performance. Yeah, Mosquera, Christian Mosquera. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I, I just have a lot of things on my mind. Yeah, yeah. So, Shumo and Salsa versus Espanyol, I think this was possibly the most interesting game of the weekend, in my opinion. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very it, good game. Yeah, when it first started, I was a bit worried for something in the first half, but then Aspa scored, and because in the first half, I just felt felt they were very disjointed. You could tell that they were a new team, and many of them hadn't played together in competitive football, but 
they got things together in the second half, and that goal they scored with Paciencia was was brilliant. Yeah, it was a great header from a striker that came from the Bundesliga to La Liga. I just wish it was my striker. <laughs> yeah, it was a good cross from Galan. Celta, like you said, they struggled at first, but then they, when the teams gelled in the second half and late in the first half, they were really, really good. And then the game yeah. just went away from them. Yeah, it went away. Esposito, another debutant, gets in a goal. And then finally, your boy Mangesta. He came in to close the game, but he sold the game. <laughs> yeah. Typical Barcelona defending from 2021 to 2020. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we have to give credit to for like just stepping up and like scoring that goal. And I'm sure Diego Martinez will be delighted because he came to this game without Raul de Tomas. Several players were missing, but you have to give credit to Espanyol. They, they, yeah. they won a great point and Celta will be kicking themselves because this should be 3.1. Yeah. Espanyol's physicality also made it very difficult for Celta in the first half. Yeah. And as for Raul de Tomas, that absence is more of down to beef between him and Diego Martinez. So it's been interesting to see how that plays out. I heard yeah. my United are linked with him, but they're also linked with a bunch of other players. We'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, like actually, I feel we've done all the games in La Liga, so let's let's talk about them because. They had the most eye-catching results of the weekend, didn't they? <laughs> what, uh, did you expect this 4-0 at halftime to Brentford? Uh, I, I can't say. I, I don't know what to expect from them, so I don't know. But it didn't surprise me when I saw the score. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what's interesting wrong? Interesting fact. Brentford... What? Yeah. Ran 13 kilometers more than my United in that game. Wow. My United did not hit 100 kilometers, which is the bare minimum you expect from any team that has 11 footballers on the pitch. That's crazy. Like, you had the year. I mean, it all started when the year. Yeah. You saw the goals, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. He made a, he made a big error for that first goal. Yeah. Then the second goal, he played a suicide ball to Ericsson and the third goal, he doesn't come out to get the ball. The fourth goal, you can't really blame him for the fourth but the fact is that that club is a bloody mess. <laughs> and how much of this is it, is it down to Ten Hag? Because I worry, when I saw that scoreline, I'm like, this could be Frank De Boer all over again, where he comes in from the Eredivisie, four games, <laughs> four losses, next. Frank De Boer. Okay, the worst manager in Premier League history by my <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's, this is not down to him. At, I mean, playing Ericsson as a defense may feel that is strange, but I mean, the guy came into a team that clearly needs 13 new players, if we're being honest. That's what Ragnik said when he was leaving. He's like, you guys need help. You, you guys need everything. New goalies, new defenders, new midfielders, new forwards. Like, where do we start at my United? It's, it's not honestly. The, the they, issue, if they, if they though, it, ten, yeah. If they consider though, it's like next week, it's not yeah. This this is though for this club is that every season they say United needs five six players. Gary Neville will come and it's so boxed and like oh the owners need to spend more money, but. They spend the money. They spend money on players. They spend a lot of money. They spend like close to a billion in the last, mm -hmm. or over a billion pounds in the last 10 years. And the team has regressed. Yeah. It's just, there's no, and that, that's another thing. Besides getting players, there's no direction, even though they get the players. Like, we ask, have to ask the question what are my United aiming for this season? I'm sure they can't tell you what they're aiming for. Yeah. There's no goal. No, oh, and and speaking of speaking of next week, it might be interesting to see if they get thrashed again by Liverpool. Liverpool they haven't really started the season well, have they? Yeah. Two games, yeah, yeah. two draws. Darwin Nunes will be missing for that game. Yeah, but I, you know, if there's a team for you to kick your start your season against at this point, <laughs> <laughs> it's my United. 
Yeah, but it seems like City are, City are flying though. Like two games, two wins, comfortable win this weekend. Uh, are they gonna have a challenger? Yeah, good. Arsenal have also started well. Gabriel Jesus yeah. is bedding in. Then Chelsea and Tottenham, they started doing well, but then they drew against each other. But their draw itself is not the main talking point. Is oh it? man, Antonio Conte. <laughs> Like that that Instagram post was like thuggish, mobbish. Child, I was like, you saw it. I, I believe you saw it. I put on like grown men. Yeah. Yes, like, yes. Having a touch line fight during the game is fine. I like to see yeah. that sometimes. The whole handshake team is a bit overboard, but it's still fine. But then going on Instagram to say, I wish I could have tripped you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. But you know the funny thing? If, if this was like, if Diego Simeone did a tenth of this, oh, if I'd let you see like 10,000 classic articles, 10,000 Guardian articles about like the dark arts. Be careful, be, be both. See, oh, Atleti had Satan destroy them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just, but... It's just hypocrisy at the end of the day. This thing but happens we... with everyone. True, true. But at least Conte is fighting people from other teams, on like what's going on in PSG, where there's drama between Neymar and Mbappe. Neymar is liking anti-Mbappe tweet. Mbappe supposedly wants Neymar out of the club. Mbappe and um, Neymar and Messi, when they were playing together, they were brilliant. Now Messi doesn't support Mbappe. Like it's they, they they've set up a brilliant team. Yeah. They've also brought Hakim into it. Like he doesn't pass to anyone but Mbappe. Like. PSG have two teams in one. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's insane because like this is they have the golden team to win the Champions League right now. They mm-hmm. recruited very well with Ocam- with Lucas Campos, and now there's all this infighting. Like, yeah. when is it gonna end? Honestly, I don't know. Galtier needs to be, and this is what PSG have needed. They need a strong coach. Galtier needs to be that strong coach to say, two of you." Don't don't think you're too big for me to drop you. Like, yeah. get your act together. Just say, Neymar, you're the penalty kick taker, the best out of the three of you. Take it. Mbappe, I don't care what your new contract says. If you don't like it, you can go to Real Madrid, see if they want you. Yeah. Yeah, you need to impose this like, thing because this is unacceptable. Yeah. Like, did you see that clip where you walk away because if it's in here, it doesn't pass the ball to him. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I saw that. I saw that video. I saw that video. And he could have gotten the goal if he continued. Yeah, because Hakimi clearly wanted to pass to only him, not Messi, who was just in the box waiting. But, yeah. yeah, like, that kind of attitude, if I was the coach, I don't care who you are, you're, you're getting stopped and you're not starting for until you learn your lesson because that's just unacceptable. I heard that Ramos, like, really let Mbappe hear it afterwards. Yeah, and and that's what they need. Like they need a leader like Ramos, like really like get this team together. Because like if they play together and they let the Eagles go aside, it could be a team that wins the Champions League. But that's the issue with PSG. Like, and that's been their issue since the Qatari project. They they have too many Eagles in one team, and that's that that could be what destroys them ultimately in the end. Because you can tell like there's lack of team chemistry. It's another. Yeah, yeah, because if this team chemistry is not there right now, what happens in the big games against like Bayern Munich when they're down and they're holding it and they have to fight for each other, they have to work hard for each other? Like, exactly. it doesn't seem like it's going to be there. It doesn't seem like it's going to get based on the evidence of this game. So, Parisians have to hope that Galtier and everyone can get Neymar and Papi to shake hands and say, focus. We have yeah. some, a goal to achieve. We can't be fighting yeah. ourselves. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. And moving on to the Bundesliga, Timo Werner, a couple minutes back into the Bundesliga, he scores again. Like All the dark clouds are, are out. Luka Jovic style. Because Luka Jovic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and do we agree with this move from Timo, Timo Werner? Do you think this is and do you think this is good from his perspective and from Leipzig's perspective? Yeah, it's very good for both perspectives because it clearly wasn't working at Chelsea. Like Timo, yes, Timo was usually on site, offside a lot, but 
he usually tries to make the right runs. He always tries to work hard. It's just some things just don't work out. And at Chelsea, if you look at it, there are quite a few forward players that it just hasn't really worked out for them in the last two years for the most part. So a, a change of scenery was very good for him. Yeah, it was. And Dortmund, they had a late comeback against Freiburg. That was interesting. A bunch of the young players did step up in that game. Moving on to Serie A, where um, Milan, they start poorly, but they come back to win 4 2. Yeah. yeah. Exciting start to the season for Milan. Yeah. Even Juventus as well, like pretty exciting stuff there. Di Maria scores, Vlaovic scores a brace. Do you feel Juventus, they can come back and challenge for the Scudetto? I believe they will challenge for it, but I also believe that the two Milan teams are a bit better than them. It depends. Yeah, what a... Juve still have job to do in the transfer window. They're, they're, in, they're very close to the pie. We'll see what happens there. Yeah. What about Roma? They, they've done some good business in the transfer window. Yeah. There's rumors that they might be in for yeah. Asensio. Mm -hmm. I have Roma as fourth towards Serie A predictions because Napoli got a lot weaker up front yes. and Roma have gotten a lot stronger overall and Dybala is a marquee signing and yeah. they also added Wijnaldum, Matic, among others, so they should be good for shirts. Yeah, yeah, it should be. And to close things off, we're going to go to the Champions League where our boy Luke de Jong, he, he showed up. Yeah, a big for <laughs> Mr. Clot. Yeah, yeah. Like honestly, Ronald, Ronald Coleman is right when he says in the air, Luke yeah. de Jong is more dangerous than Neymar. No, it's, it's not rocket science, but he was right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and, we could have done with Luke de Jong on, some, on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you think he has like he's going to be good enough to get PSG over the line against Rangers? Yeah, definitely. I think he can do his bit to help them. It's going to be a pretty tough game, though, because both teams are really good. Rangers, they got to, to the Europa League um, final. Right. They lost yeah. some penalties. And, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see watch that game. Yeah, yeah. And with that, that's all we have for today. Thanks you so much, Oscar, for coming on again or for being here with me. Um, thank you the listeners for listening and if you do like the podcast please give us a like comment or give us a nice rating on Spotify because it does help us and we'll see you all next week bye